<clears throat> I would like to call the June 28th, 2016 Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business is to approve uh, some of our uh, recent minutes. Uh, first is the February 23rd, 2016 minutes. Move to approve. Second. Uh, all in favor? All right, that's one, two, three, four, six. Six nothing. You weren't here, right? Uh, next is the March 22nd uh, meeting minutes. Can I motion to approve? So moved. I have a, I have a move. Maybe just a quick correction. Sure. <clears throat> for the March minutes. Uh, it just refers to you on the first page as the acting chairman when oh. in fact, <laughs> and then at the at the end it it refers to Mr. Valancourt. Uh, as acting chairman, when in fact I think you were, you were there, Josh. So it should probably reference you as the chair. <laughs> it may have been a carryover from old. Yeah. Minutes or something like that. Yeah. All right. Well. So just that's, that's it. Just got a couple corrections. Okay. With those changes, uh, all in favor? I wasn't there. Okay. One, two, three, four. Oh, that was okay. Four and. Yep. For nothing? For nothing. And April 26th. Move to approve the April 26th, 2016 minutes. All in favor? Or second? Second. All in favor? And that one is for six nothing. Okay. Uh, there is no old business, so we'll move right in. Oh, if you uh, did not participate in the uh, original um, uh, Bismar matter, Chair, on the record that the last time I live on Hennepin Cove Road, I was, I just note that I live Hen on Hennepin Cove Road and the applicant is adjacent to our street. So it's a Do you want theoretical. To on the record again? I, it's part of the minutes from the previous. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's fine, right? Okay. And you're stuck. We, we need you now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, the one um, item of new business is to hear the Superior Court remand of the request of Leslie Fismer, owner of the property at 20 Cunner Lane, to appeal the Code Enforcement Officer's decision to approve building permit number 150401 for a new single family dwelling at 19 Cunner Lane, map U14, lot 26 1. Specifically, the court is requesting that the zoning board create more findings of fact for the record. Suggestions on where and how to start. Um, I don't think we need any comment. I discussed this with Ben previously. I don't think we need any comment from the public or from the applicant or the recipient of the permit. Um, we, uh, for this matter, I do not believe we need to hear any public comment or any comment from the applicant or the appellant because we're basically just making findings of fact based on the prior hearing. So we're not, there, in, my, in my view, we don't need to entertain any additional uh, argument and certainly not accept any additional evidence. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. So uh, I'm willing to entertain any uh, suggestions on kind of how to start parsing this and I mean basically we need to go through um, you know the the prior the that meeting was July 28th 2015 and basically come up with findings of fact from that meeting additional findings of fact to satisfy the uh, Superior Court Josh, I've, I've thought about this because at the time I, I was interested actually in, in going into it a bit more uh, as you may recall uh, so I thought about this and I put together some 
maybe I'll give us a start at least. Uh, and what I'd like to do is is to uh, hand them out since I typed them, it'd be a sure. little easier. Great. Um, and read through them, and then we can discuss it to see if any, any or all are acceptable or need to be changed in some way. Would you, would you like to read them? Yes, uh, just to, to kind of fit this into the process. The last time we had three findings of fact. Um, I would propose retaining those three findings of fact. Uh, they were one that on May 22, 2015, the code enforcement officer approved building permit number 150401 to construct a single family dwelling on vacant lot at 19 Cunner Lane, tax map U14, lot 26 1. The second finding we made on July 28, 2015, was that on June 19, 2015, Lesmi Fismer sub submitted an administrative appeal stating that the building permit number 150401 violates the Town of Cape Elizabeth zoning ordinance and therefore should not be rescinded. Number three, we found that on February 18, 1997, the Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board approved the creation of the subject lot based on section 19-4-2B of the zoning ordinance in effect at that time. So what I'm proposing is that we add four additional findings of fact to those three, beginning with the following. Number four, notwithstanding the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board grant of a public access waiver in 1997, on February 23, 2010, the owner of 19 Cunner Lane was advised by the code enforcement officer that he must meet the requirements of section 19-7-9A1 and section 19-7-9A2 of the zoning ordinance uh, now in effect to provide access to and street frontage for uh, a residential lot before a building permit would issue. Five, that there is no dispute that the owner of 19 Cunner Lane has met the requirements of section 19-7-9A1 of the zoning ordinance. Six, by virtue of the declaration of covenants with respect to road maintenance individual executed by the owner of 19 Cunner Lane and recorded in Cumberland County Registry of Deeds Book 2717, page 215 on April 20th, 210, the owner of 19 Cunner Lane has met the requirements of 19-7-9A2. Seven, Inasmuch as the owner of 19 Cunner Lane has met the requirements of section 19-7-9A1 and section 19-7-9A2 of the zoning ordinance, the code enforcement officer did not err by approving building permit number 150401 to construct a single family dwelling on a vacant lot at 19 Cunner Lane, tax map U14, lot 26-1. And I would be happy to entertain questions or comments. Well, I, I think that's a great start and, and maybe accomplishes much of the work we need to do here tonight. Um, I think the only thing, I, I think those are, those are on point. Uh, perhaps we add an additional finding uh, indicating that we uh, included or do conclude that uh, legally, I'm sorry, uh, based upon the recommendation of the fire chief, the road provides adequate all season access, uh, all season emergency access for the existing and proposed use. So I know that is part of the 1979 standard as well. Right. Well, that is in fact what number five states because it says that it, it met the requirements of 197-9A1 of the zoning ordinance. But if you prefer the more specific language you proposed, I'm happy with that since it means the same thing. And perhaps we just blend what I read from the actual ordinance into number five. It's fine. Yeah, and I mean, I think in this case, specificity um, will help us. So um, I think kind of adding that language would be helpful. Um, 
I'm not sure I love just the language there is no dispute. Um, I mean, this is a finding that the board is making, so. Well, both of, both of the uh, parties agreed, agreed right. that there was, in fact, no dispute about that issue. And they, they so stated right. in the hearing. And I'm also just wondering, in, in terms of the language of seven, um, again, since we're that the board is considering this in a de novo capacity, not as in an appellate capacity, the language that the CEO did not err. Um, I'm wondering if we should be kind of using language basically where we're, we're just determining that um, you know a permit should have you know properly issued. Issued. Um, it's it's a very small. I'm fine with that. I, I don't necessarily agree with the, the court's interpretation, but that's another matter. Other thoughts? If we're going to canvas some of the other issues as well, how about the issue of waiver that was brought up at the hearing and whether we should be discussing a, a finding of fact on the issue of waiver? I mean, I don't necessarily think it would hurt. I, my, I guess, you know, kind of thinking about this as I was just looking back through the material, um, the arguments that were presented before the board at the last hearing, um, I think if we err on the side of making findings of fact relating to those arguments, you know, and basically the issue right now is this is going to go back to the Superior Court and the Superior Court needs findings of fact to make the determination as to whether or not our underlying conclusion is correct. So I think if, if we, if you know, that was argued to the board, so it can't hurt. I don't think it can hurt to, to make a finding of that. Well, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what, what finding we would make beyond what we've already made, which was that it was at one time granted. The, the purpose of the waiver is essentially, in terms of, as I understand it, the purpose of the waiver in that case was to obtain a building permit, and the same or a similar process had to be uh, uh, endured or, or taken on uh, by the applicant in that case, and that was he had to get certification from the fire department uh, for access to the property. Uh, that's the same certification that he had to obtain under the, the new ordinance as well. So I don't think there's a change in, in the general conditions that, that uh, the applicant had to uh, abide by. That's fine. The other issue, uh, issue that I wanted to raise was whether we should make a note that no supplemental information has been brought to the board's attention other than the court's decision of So no, no supplemental evidence slash argument, evidence and argument? Other than the court's um, decision, I think it was May, I don't have the date in front of me, but it's May of this year. So uh, the order I have is May 17th. Oh, was, was that? docketed on May 25th oh, and dated okay. May 17th. Okay, there we are. Right, so May. <laughs> May 17th then. And if we're gonna actually go down that road, then we should perhaps have a summary finding that when we started out the hearing of why we're not gonna open up um, the right. record and that we've prepared and reviewed and, and we're essentially going back on the material that has already been submitted. Correct. Okay. Um, any suggestions for that particular language? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like the idea of kind of a summary, like before we get into the specific numbers, <clears throat> findings of fact, basically stating what we're doing. Well, you know, based on the remand, this is why we're here. This is what we're considering. So actually, I think, I think the language in terms of the no supplemental evidence, that might 
kind of more appropriately be in the summary finding at the beginning. Yes. I'm kind of just stating what uh, the board is doing at this time. Um, we should actually ask the code enforcement officer. Is that correct? That the, um, Be careful here because if we're not admitting evidence, then, um, then it's just based on the court order and the hearing transcript and the submissions at the last hearing. So there may have been supplemental material, but it has not been added to the record as we currently have it. In other words, someone may have written to the code enforcement officer on this particular application. Um, but that's not currently before the board. You mean after the remand? Uh, or after their last hearing. Right. I, but we don't have that. No, that's right. So no supplement. The, the hearing is closed, as it were. Yes. And it's based on the record at the we're, last we're, hearing. Right. We're, we're simply making additional findings of fact based on the record at the prior hearing. July 8th, 28th. Are we going to make the original findings of fact? We have the original three findings of fact. I don't think we need to restate those. I think we probably just want to add, we just want to add to those. We're not changing those. Um, That's correct. I think as long as we make it clear on the record yep. that those aren't changed, that we continue to stand by those particular findings and then supplement the findings so to your, your suggestions. All right, so I'm just working on language kind of for this introductory finding. Um, this is, I think this would be like the second sentence, but the board makes the following additional findings of fact based on the record from the July 28th, 2015 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, the, Three findings of fact um, the boards three findings of fact from the July 28th 2015 meeting remain unchanged um, so what, what what language do we want to use to basically state that we are not accepting or I guess is that is that do are we saying that by the board the board makes the following additional findings of fact based on the record from the based on the record from the July twenty eighth, twenty fifteen Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Do we want to go a step further and say we haven't accepted anything else or that's clear? I think that's I think that's clear. We, we can add in a lot. I guess it doesn't, I suppose it probably doesn't hurt add in the line saying that there weren't any additional submissions. Uh, well, the board, the board has not received or considered any additional evidence or argument.
board's three findings of fact from the July 28, 2015 meeting remain unchanged. Um, anything else that we want kind of in that introductory paragraph? Did you want to add a reference to the, the judge's order saying that this is what we're about to do? How about we do this, yeah. Um, pursuant to the pursuant to the superior courts may 17th 2015 16. 16. May, 20, may 17th 2016 order in I'm just going to put the name, the name of the case um, in Fismer v. Town of Cape Elizabeth. I'm throwing the docket number. Docket number CMSC 8P. All right, so right now I have pursuant to the Superior Court's May 17th, 2016 order in Fismer versus Town of Cape Elizabeth, docket number CUMSC dash AP dash 15 dash 038, um, remanding. this matter to the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. The board makes the following additional findings of fact. That's a very long run on sentence. Um, the board makes the, fo the following additional findings of fact based on the record how about the board makes the following additional findings of fact, period. These findings are based on the record from the July 28th, 2015 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. The board has not received or considered any additional evidence or argument. The board's three findings of fact from the July 28th, 2015 meeting remain unchanged. Sounds good. All right. Um, so where were we with the... Um, these four findings. We wanted to make a couple tweaks to them. I have one tweak to my own, <laughs> and that is on on number four in the in the in the fourth line. I've uh, in my typing, I've I've actually repeated four a twice there toward the end of this the line. You cross out one of the four a's. This is in finding four. Yeah. Finding four, line four, toward the end, ah. it says street frontage 4A, 4A, residential lot. Okay. I apologize for that. And I don't know that we necessarily need to change five um, in, in line with what I suggested earlier. I mean, it, number five does very specifically reference that provision That's of the right. ordinance that I read. Um, so... You know, on second thought, I think that probably does it. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. Um, and then my little tweak to seven was, instead of saying the code enforcement officer did not err, um, in as much as the owner of 19 Connor Lane has met the requirements of the zoning ordinance, um, Maybe that's, I, I don't know, I'm going back and forth. I mean, he, he did issue the permit, and we are upholding the issuance of the permit. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. I'm okay with it as it is. What do you think? I'm on the fence. Um, there was some discussion in the judge's order saying this to Novo. Right. And that well, it's not an but, appellate decision as to the CEO's decision. Right, but it's... But well, we're not issuing the permit. 
the permits the permit has been issued yes in other words we like so our finding isn't going to be and a permit shall issue we, we are even though it's not in an appellate capacity the permit has issued we're not overturning that I would not know how to word that provision that we're now talking about um, well, I guess right how, how would we word that without referring to the code enforcement officer Pro properly I mean it, we'd be taking it we'd be taking the words code enforcement officer out but we would still have to say you know properly issued or should have issued or you know I feel like foundationally by by approving assuming we do these additional findings we're really satisfying our duty to conduct a de novo review and, and seven is just sort of conclusory saying we agree with the code enforcement officer's decision and, and based on these findings based on these additional findings yeah. which are the findings that the right. that the court has ordered us to make right i feel like we're okay but okay and you had mentioned waiver are you it just came up during the right. during the hearing it's in the papers as well um you know by implication uh, of our findings it means that we did not believe that waiver was an issue right so we can make that same sta similar statement but an over in text comment um that by implication the wa waiver was not an issue for the purposes of the board reaching a decision then it is not a decision uh, now. And I'm, I'm okay adding something like that. I don't think it can hurt. Craft some words and we'll see how it sounds. What do you, what do you suggest? Um, <laughs> this would be like number, this would be, I'd move this to number seven and then seven would become eight. Yes. Um, what do you think? Yes, the, this would be inserted in between six and seven as, as currently drafted. Anybody have suggested language for the waiver? The applicant raised the issue of waiver. Um, hold on. There's a reference in the transcript. Um, let's see if I can find it. Why don't we just say that I think what I'm saying is that the public access waiver remains valid in the opinion of the board. The public access waiver waiver remains valid in the opinion of the board. Now, how about how about the board finds that the public access waiver remains valid? Yes, and there is support in the transcript from that. Did you want to add that last? I mean, no. The tra the, the comment about right. the transcript is me to you. Yeah, not, not as a right. no. yeah. Okay. Board finds that the public access waiver remains valid. I think that's short and to the point. Okay. You may want to add 1997, just to be clear. The board finds that the 1997 public yeah. That's Thank how you. the court refers to it. it. Anything else? So that would be. Uh, I would suggest that you put that as four and put everything else behind it. Logically, that's how it would flow. Okay. Because we reference in, in the existing three, we reference the actual planning board decision. So, okay. 
All right, I'm just reading this back to myself before. All right, here's what I have for the introductory paragraph. Um, well, I, I think we're, we kind of have everything in good shape. Any other comments or? I'm waiting to hear you read it. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> Pursuant to the Superior Court's May 17th, 2016 order in Fismer versus Town of Cape Elizabeth, docket number CUMSC-AP-15-038, remanding this matter to the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeal, the board makes the following additional findings of fact. These findings are based on the record from the July 28th, 2015 Zoning Board, board of Appeals meeting. The board has not received or considered any additional evidence or argument. The board's three findings of fact from the July 28th, 2015 meeting remain unchanged. Um, and then just going right into the findings, uh, number four, the board finds that the 1997 public access waiver remains valid. Five, notwithstanding the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board's grant of a public access waiver in 1997 on February 20, on February 23, 2010, the owner of 19 Cunner Lane was advised <clears throat> by the code enforcement officer that he must meet the requirements of section 19-7-9A1 and section 19-7-9A2 of the zoning ordinance now in effect to provide access to and street frontage for a residential lot before a building permit would issue. Six. There is no dispute that the owner of 19 Cunner Lane has met the requirements of section 19-7-9A1 of the zoning ordinance. Seven, by virtue of the de declaration of covenants with respect to road maintenance individual executed by the owner of 19 Cunner Lane and recorded in Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, book 27717, page 215, on April 20th, 2010, the owner of 19 Cunner Lane has met the requirements of 19-7-9A2. Eight, inasmuch as the owner of 19 Cunner Lane has met the requirements of section 19-7-9A1 and section 19-7-9A2 of the zoning ordinance, the code enforcement officer did not err by approving building permit number 150401 to construct a single family dwelling on a vacant lot at 19 Cunner Lane, tax map U14, lot 26-1. Move to approve the additional findings as read into the record by Chairman Carver. Second. I second it. All in favor? All right. Those additional findings of fact are now added to the record um, by four nothing. entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Adjourned. Thank you for taking the time to put those together.